Welcome back to a new video on the Photography Minimalist. As I mentioned, I wanted to get out again, this time around with the Rollei 35 LED. So, in my right-hand pocket, I have my Gossen B6 light meter. And in my left pocket, let me just change my hand on the camera. In my left pocket, I have the Rollei 35 LED. And it's Tuesday. So it's uh, earlier than I thought to get out again. Every now and then there's a little bit of sunshine, not too much. So I've taken three photos until now. It's getting dark again, so I'm heading back home. And I still have three or four days left this week. Hopefully more sunshine, so I'll be out again to make some new photos. I'll be back. <music> Before I show you the remaining 28 images, which I took with the Rollei, I thought I would first shortly touch base with you on the Rollei 35 LED and the Adox 100 CHS 2. I've already done a few videos on the Rollei 35 LED, and I have to say that the more I use this camera, the more it amazes me. What I like most about the camera is the build quality. It has a very high build quality. Also, the quality and the sharpness and the contrast of this little lens. An interesting feature also is the fact that it has a variable aperture, meaning that you can use in between apertures. It's also a very quiet camera to use and pocketable for me, which is very important. You can take it anywhere. It is, however, a little fragile in the sense that you need to pull out the lens and click it into place before you can take a photo and like I mentioned it is very quiet and you need to cock the shutter or advance the film before you can push the button and click the lens back into the camera body something not to forget and never try to force the lens back into the camera body a little camera that has really grown on me and I really appreciate and a camera that I'm going to be using much more often. I'm very happy to have three of these cameras in working condition. This is my first experience with Adox and this specific film. The company was established back in 1860, manufacturing chemistry for photography and film, making it the oldest company of its kind in the world. And this film has two terms which you read about on their website. One is orthopanchromatic and the other one is halation layers. Let's look at orthopanchromatic first, which means that the film is sensitive to light of all colors and is able to transfer all these different colors into tonal grays, giving a very broad tonal range, making it an interesting film for specific types of photography. The second term that jumps at you is halation. This film has two halation layers. One is in between the base layer and the sensitive layer and increases the sharpness. And the other halation layer is on the backside, which prevents light piping and also prevents curling of the film. In the case of curling of the film, for me, that didn't help enough because after developing the film and drying the film, like I do with all of my films, this film really curls. So that's something you need to take into account. I also noticed that the material is a little bit stiffer than normal negative film making it a little bit more difficult to spool into my Patterson tank. 
But anyway, it is a very interesting film. And based on the results that I was able to achieve, I can indeed say that it has a very broad tonal range and a very broad dynamic range. And there is a distinct shoulder at the highlights preventing the highlights from being blown out. And I've seen in a number of the images that I've taken that I still had detail in the highlights. So I'm wondering why this film isn't being used more often. It is a very sharp film and I paid six euros and 75 cents for this roll of film. Very interesting film. I'm going to be using this film much more often and in different cameras. I have been trying to purchase it in the medium format size, but everyone is sold out. And I guess that's partially also due to the pandemic at the moment. Everybody's looking for something to do. Camera prices, secondhand prices of analog cameras are just going up and up. And films like this are sold out, which is a great shame. I have a pre-order in for medium format for this 100 film. And I'm very curious how that works in either a TLR or in my Salyut 66. I developed the film in FX39, which is a developer from Adox for a period of seven and a half minutes at 20 degrees Celsius at a one plus nine dilution. You can also develop it at one plus 14 or one plus 19, of course, lengthening the development times. Now it's time to have a look at the 28 remaining images and some video capture, which I did. Thank you again for watching this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you're more than welcome to do so because there are a lot of new videos that will be coming out. Take care and I look forward to seeing you next time.